I'm with Yvette Isaacs from Roads of Success. Now, Yvette, what is Roads of Success? Roads of Success is a non-profit organization that has a heart for the persecuted women in the Middle East, Christians and minorities of the Middle East. You know, where there is war, they are the first one to pay the highest price. So we have this heart for the persecuted Christians and minorities in the Middle East. And we do four things to help them out. We do have four programs. The first one is empowerment. They need to be empowered. They need to feel loved. They need to feel like there is hope for tomorrow. So we do have this empowerment education plans and like healing from trauma. And also we do help them with television show that it airs all over the Middle East and all over the world for Arabic speaking people, for women and for children and for families. And when were you started and why were you started? Because I saw the need and because there is a calling. When you have a calling, God will make a way for your calling to happen. And what is your mission? Our mission is to reach out to the persecuted people through media, through education, through advocacy, and also through humanitarian aid. Uh, now you're here in Israel at the moment. What are you doing here? I'm speaking in a conference in Bethlehem for Arabic-speaking people. And it's really amazing and to speak during the time of Christmas from the land of Christmas. And it's just beautiful. Now, you work with persecuted Christians. Is persecution of Christians on the rise? Yes. Yes, 100%. Mm. And unfortunately, that the world, they don't know about Christian Middle Eastern. When you mention the word Middle Eastern, they will think about there is no Christian in the Middle East and all terrorists. But this is not the truth. And I have a story to share with you. I met an 11-year-old in Syria. He lost his twin brother in a school bombing, and he got wounded himself. And when I met him, I told him, why don't you leave? You are very much qualified to leave Syria and to live in a safer place. He looked at me as if I don't understand the situation. He said, that's where Christianity started. And we intended not to leave because if the Christian will leave the Middle East, this will be the throne of Satan and the whole world will not have peace. So we chose to stand for the Christian in the world. That was one question I wanted to ask you. Are we losing the Christians in the Middle East? Definitely. Definitely we are losing them and because they feel like nobody hears them, nobody cares for them, nobody knows what they, they've been through. Mm, it's very sad. Uh, what is fueling this? The rising of persecution and the rising of all the terrorist group around the world and, and they know that uh, the Christians are weak and they can just eat them for lunch. Mm. So they go and eat them, nobody talks about it, or if anybody will talk about it, they will talk about it, and then you forget about it the next day. Mm. So nobody will care. Mm. And how are you personally helping the persecuted Christians here in the Middle East? Like I mentioned before, we help in, in four ways. Empowering them by having empowering programs, education, trauma, help, help with their trauma that they've been going through and empowering also we help them to start their own business small businesses so they can be independent and they don't have to be under you know the people who persecute them and at the same time we do encourage them with television and with media programs that it talks about how to stand in the time of persecution and who you are and your identity in God and you're not forgotten. And the other thing also, we take their cases and we speak in parliament and speak at, before Congress, the UK Parliament, the United Nations and many other government entities who can help and who can understand. And we're causing awareness in churches, in clubs, so especially in churches because the body of Christ around the world, they need to know that they have brothers and sisters living in this part of the world, and they need to know what is their situation, and how can you pray for them, how can you stand with them, how can you stand with them in front of your government, so your government will understand that there are Christians in the Middle East, and they can help. 
is it important also for you to be here in Bethlehem because Bethlehem itself is losing its Christian community? It's so sad. Bethlehem, it was like 99% Christians. Now we're talking about less than 7%. It's so sad. And the world don't even know that there are Christians in Palestine. They think that they all the terrorists, the same situation. But there are Christians here. And if, you know, we put pressure on them, they will be leaving. And if they leave, there will be no peace. The Christians are the peacemakers. And they are the one who are standing for peace. Are you hearing wonderful stories despite the persecution? Definitely. The God of glory in the midst of the war. I'll tell you a few stories. A story about Aleppo. There is a man who's a doctor, had a dream before the invasion took place. And the dream was that Jesus came and told him, I want you to dig 20 wells, water wells for me in Aleppo. So he went and he told his friends at the church, and they said, oh, what are you talking about? Aleppo is surrounded with water, and there is no problem with water at all. What are you talking about? He went the second day, and he had the same dream. And he went again and told them, and they said, oh, second time? Let's think about it. The third night, the same dream. And then he went and he said, if nobody will help me, I'll do it myself. So he gathered all the leaders from around Aleppo, from all the nominations, and he told them about the dream, and they all gathered together, and they started to dig the water wells. When they finished number 20, guess what? All the, the enemy came, and the first thing they did, guess what? They surrounded the city, and they cut off all the water supplies from the city for 72 days, and only the church people that they were standing by the water wells giving people water so they can survive. And many other stories. God, the God of glory in the midst of the war. I have another story. Uh, a Yazidi man was just like, went home. And when he went home, he found no one from his family at home. He thought that they left to do something. He discovered that ISIS came and picked them all up and kidnapped them. He has a father who was one or five years old. And he was so sad. And he's been waiting for them to come back for six months. He was walking and he saw a church that has a cross on the top and there was light on it. So he said, I want to go up to see if they can help me. He went up and they started to pray with them. And that night when he prayed with the Christian people and they prayed for him, Jesus appeared to the father who is one or five years old. And he told him, my name is the light of the world. And tomorrow early morning, ISIS will come and they will kick you out of your place, you and all of your family. And when you get out, there will be a van waiting for you. And this van will take you home. And he got up and he told his wife, you know, I had this dream. He said, you're one or five years old. What are you talking about? We've been here six months. We're going to die here. Sure enough, six o'clock in the morning, ISIS came, kicked them all out with rudeness, and they all went to the desert on the road. And a van stopped by and picked them up and dropped them off at their home. And when they turned to thank the man, the driver, he, they did not find the driver nor the van. And the man testified, and he taped this with me. The situation in Syria seems to be getting worse and worse. We have Iran in Syria. We have uh, Russia in Syria. Do you think it's going to get better? Well, there are people who are praying, and there are innocent blood that it was shed. And God is a God of just and God of mercy. He has Syria in his heart, mm. and the blood of the Christians speaking out. Are you seeing change through the work that you do? I went to Syria before, before the war. The Syrian people are the nicest people, educated, gentle, classic, artists, and even the way on the streets, the way you drive and the way they drive, they, they have culture of respect and honor. After the war, I didn't see that. The, 
the people change, their heart change. War does change the people. But war does not change the face of the people. There are Christians that their face is higher, is higher and it has a different level. Like I went to church and I saw the church is filled with people. And you know that the churches are targeted. So I said, how come, where do you get this boldness to come to church knowing that the church can be bombed at any time? And you dress nice and you look very nice. So they were making jokes. When we go to heaven, we want to look nice before Jesus. But at the same time, said, if we stay home, we're going to die. And they are going to say, you know, a bomb hit an apartment building and the people died. But if we die in the church, they will say the Christian people die. So we will make a statement and our blood will speak. Now, you're also involved in television. Tell us a little bit about the television work that you're doing. We do have a television ministry with different Christian network, Christian television network. But basically, we do have our most of our programs here at Al Karma Network that it goes around the world for Arabic speaking people. And it, it's just an amazing opportunity to to reach out to the weak, to the people who are looking for God, and they don't know if he exists or not. And it's a way of encouraging them with the word of God, helps them to keep their identity and to know their identity in the midst of the war. You know, when there is war, you forget your identity. Fear will take over. But when you hear, when you hear the word of God, his encouragement, his heart, you will be encouraged. You will know that I'm the daughter of the king. We are his children. He will care for us. Even if we die, we are making a statement. We are making history. We are making legacy for Jesus. That makes a huge difference. And when you teach them how to apply God's word in their daily suffering and in, in daily uh, oppression, they find hope and they can stand. And at the same time, we just don't go in front of the television so they will see us in, in the television but we go with them on the front lines we go and visit them when they ask can you be here can you come we go and we stand so they will know that Jesus is not only on television he's not only on the pulpit but Jesus is with them on the front lines loving them helping them gives them food gives them water gives them blankets gives them jackets and that's what we do we go with containers loaded with all of winter gear, summer gears, whatever they need to tell them we are here for you and we're standing with you. Now you are empowering women. What do you want to see change for women in the Middle East? To know their identity more and never to lose their identity. Women are strong and they hold their family. And when they can, they know who they are. They can really encourage their children the new generation and they can help them out and we can find a better world a better christians a stronger generation for jesus why do you do what you do because i'm called to it god called me to do it and i said yes lord what's your prayer for the middle east mercy and justice to prevail mm. and for the people to know what's happening to their brothers and sisters and to stand with them. You have a website for people who'd like to know more about your work. What's your website address? It's roadsofsuccess.org. And I do have an Arabic one. It's called mfadela.org. Okay, Yvette, thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for your time.